Hello everyone, this is Carol, and I'm going to show you the difference between different types of card decks. We're going to be looking at the traditional Rider weight deck, which is the deck that I learned on. In the early days, there were no such things as oracle cards, so we're lucky today to have so many wonderful decks to choose from. The Rider weight deck is the deck I'm going to show you first. And this hopefully you'll be able to see, but there are 78 cards in the Rider weight, and they're made up of suits and what we call the Major Arcana. The regular playing card deck that we use today, believe it or not, was derived from the Tarot and um, the Rider weight is the most popular that's come into uh, use in the last 30 years, I would say. So as you can see, there are a lot of cards. There are 78 cards that make up the Rider weight deck. Um, we have what's called the Major Arcana, which these are major influences on someone's life. They usually have to do with a major life lesson. Then we have the suit cards or the pip cards. These are the swords and they have to do with mental thinking and difficult situations. These are the pinnacles which have to do with monetary things, possessions, land, um, money, and people always love to see them come up in the spread. We have the very, very wonderful hearts that have to do with emotions and uh, you know, with love relationships, and then Last but not least, and I'm trying to find just one wand, and wouldn't you know, out of all the wands, I can't find one, but here's one. Here are the wands, which we actually use uh, for things like creativity, enterprise, new projects getting going, that sort of thing. It could even involve building a home. So there you have the 78 card tarot deck. And I'll be doing a class just on the Tarot itself come the fall of 2013. But there are 78 cards in the deck, and sometimes that's a lot for some people to handle, and they don't really vibe with the Tarot deck, and that's fine. The other thing I want to mention is the Tarot deck has received a lot of bad press, because of a few certain cards within it, and they have nothing to do with the devil or Satanism or anything like that. Cards are a divination tool, just like a pendulum, just like rune stones, uh, just like scrying, which means looking to an object. Um, they're just a tool, and they should be handled, as I said in the previous video, um, Carefully. In other words, don't let any old person come along, pick them up, and, and put their energies into the cards. It's okay to let your clients hold the cards and shuffle them, but you want to keep the cards fairly pristine. So like I showed you on yesterday's video, I keep my cards in um, holders like this, um, card bag is what they're called, and satin is good, velvet is good. Some of your best colors, though, are black and gray to really keep out the negativity. All right, so that is the 78 card tarot deck. The other thing is, is that these 78 cards can come up what we call reversed, and so they have a slightly different meaning when they come up like that, and that even adds more to the learning. <laughs> so again, these cards are not always the most favorite, but everyone that I've ever known that is a professional that works in bookstores or has their own private practice will use some form of the Tarot deck. Here is another Tarot deck, which is one of my favorites. It's called the Gilded deck. It's another 78 card traditional deck. And it is absolutely beautiful. Just It's just so beautifully um, rendered that I had to have this deck as soon as it came out, as soon as I saw other people using it. Just really, really beautiful. You can see some more of the cards with the gilded deck. 
So those are the two tarot decks that I have. Now, reading oracle cards as opposed to a tarot deck, there's really not that much difference. The oracle cards come up and you'll find that they have written on them meanings. Like this one says, Ori Desert. Um, this is a deck called the Enchanted Map that I really, really like. It's from Colette Baron Reed, and I just I use it a lot when I'm looking for more spiritual aspects to a reading. Um, oracle cards do not need to be read reversed. In other words, if an oracle card happens to come up, let's say like this you just put it right side up. They don't need to be read reversed like a lot of the tarot decks. And I might mention that even with the tarot deck, I do not read reverse. I don't believe that there's a need to, and um, I feel like the tarot is standalone and doesn't need to have many more meanings packed into it. So this is a very beautiful deck. It says Spirit of the Place is this one. It has a nice little elf there. Goblins in a forest. You know, and you've seen Ori Desert. Um, and what I want to say about Oracle decks is that oftentimes a card will come up that you have a meaning for it already on the card, but what you're picking up psychically may not have anything at all to do with what it says on the card so that when you're doing a reading I really will be encouraging all students to you can take into account the meaning but you're going to go more into the card in depth we're going to be talking about how to do that and letting your own psychic juices flow, so to speak, so that you start getting impressions that may not have anything to do with the name of the card at all. Okay, let's take a look at one of Doreen Virtue's decks. And this is the um, Goddess Guidance Oracle Cards. And you can see that there are many beautiful cards. Mary Magdal Magdalene is here, and this says, Love yourself, others, in every situation, no matter what the outward appearances may be. So again, you can start getting information from what's on the card initially, but then you're going to be moving more into your psychic senses and getting additional information as to what it means in relation to the question that has been asked and that is being a real psychic versus just being a card reader. Sedna, you are supplied for today and all of your tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Kuan Yin, one of my favorite goddesses, release judgments about yourself and others and focus on the love and light that is within everyone. Most oracle decks have a really positive message, and that's fine. Um, but the thing is, life isn't all rosy and um, daffodils. Everything doesn't always come up roses. And so this is where your traditional deck may give you some more insightful information um, that is is really quite detailed. And so using the tarot in this instance, um, this is a messenger. Someone may be bringing a message of vital importance and there's a lot of thought behind it. That's what the Page of Swords means. Um, so eventually you may want to move into learning how to read the Rider Waite. But again, with your Oracle cards, you may see just really positive, sunny, rosy cards. Um, but there's also going to be some hidden meanings that you're going to need to pull out of the reading, so to speak. And you'll be able to do that quite easily, I believe, within a short amount of time. 
All right, so this is Ask Your Guides from Sonia Coquette. She's another person. I really, really like this one. It says New Life Divine Mother. That's very pretty. Um, obviously, that's a card of someone who's either pregnant, going to be pregnant, uh, or just about ready to give birth, uh, or maybe just a new mother. Uh, shame. Okay, this isn't so wonderful. Everybody carries a certain amount of shame in this life, and there's no shame in having shame, you know. So there's a lot of information that someone could get from a card like this that comes up in a reading, and it says Divine Helpers. This one is business, Venus. Venus, believe it or not, the planet and goddess of love, also rules business and money. And a lot of people don't know that. So that's another beautiful card in the Sonia Coquette deck. And celebration, joy guides. We all have a joy guide that is with us, teaching us to take the time out to be happy, be as little children again, and sometimes just let go of all the burdens that we carry all the time. We'll be talking about joy guides in the weeks to come. So that's Sonia Coquette's deck. And it's called Ask Your Guides, and that's the back of it. Hopefully I don't have it upside down. All right, last but not least, one of my favorite decks is the Osho Zen. This is the back of the Osho Zen. The Osho Zen is another 78 card deck that was actually modeled on the Tarot deck, the traditional 78 cards. What happened for me is when I tried to translate each of these cards over to the Tarot, I was having a really hard time. Now this would mean the tower in the tarot. That's easy for me to uh, figure out. But after a while, I realized that it was putting me in my left brain and out of my psychic brain, my right hemisphere. So I began to read these as oracle cards, and I think most people do. Um, but there, it's a very popular deck. It's a little bit more expensive because you do buy a set and a book that comes along with it. And the book is pretty good sized. It's not the little you know, card size that usually comes with your regular tarot decks. Um, but reading the Osho Zen, there's so much spirituality. You can see my poor source card is kind of beat up because I've had it for so many years. Um, but just looking at that, you can get a lot of information. And, and it's, it means the source and it means the sun in the tarot deck. And for me, I look at a card like this, and I just let myself just fall into the card, just let myself go and fall into it, and then just start paying attention to what I'm getting on a psychic level. So we'll be doing a three-card spread here in a few moments. That'll be the next movie that you're going to watch, that I will be using three of the Osho Zen cards. And I think you're going to enjoy watching the movies. This is one of my favorites, you know, a new vision, a new idea. Um, There's so many of them here that I could go on all afternoon, but I know time is a wasting here. Here's another great one, listening to your inner voice, rebirth, you know, a new beginning. So anyway, um, I do have a picture of the table that follows yesterday's video when I went over how to set up your table and I just added a few more things that I forgot to show in that video because I really never showed the table complete and a um, couple more things of course you won't be having all these boxes and cards you know normally I don't keep any more than two decks on my table at any given time um, especially if I'm reading out in public. There just isn't the room and you don't want to become distracted in your reading by all this stuff on the periphery. But um, I did a snapshot of how the table set up 
and I also want to mention that I use White Angelica for protection. Of course, we use it for our protection before we begin any reading. But this is great for just putting on your wrists, maybe behind your ears, just like a perfume. And it adds an aura of protection, and it's, it's angelic protection around you. This is from Young Living, and it's a very popular essential oil that almost everybody uses at some point in time. You can also use aromatherapy to clear the area of your table where you do readings and just spritz some Bach flowers or lavender or rose oil. Those are excellent. Um, I have a bottle of water on here. Um, this would probably be down on the floor by me rather than on my table, but you get very dehydrated and thirsty after doing a reading or two, so you're going to want to have really good water by you. And besides that, water is a conductor of energy. It's a natural conductor, so it's really going to help enhance your psychic perceiving. So always having water by you, whether you're in class, you're taking a class, um, meditating, doing any kind of uh, what I call the intuitive work. Have water by you. It's an excellent thing. Someone asked me one time, well, is it okay to drink your water after you have it sitting by you, let's say, in a glass or something? I say, absolutely, you get all the blessings of that water. You can always bless your water, too, with a little prayer before you um, put it by you as well. And again, I always say some kind of a prayer before I begin doing a reading. And then after the reading, I always, always just flush down the energies and into the ground and down my grounding cord and then pull in the energies of the Mother Earth and from the universal source to recharge my batteries. Because just like we, dis we discussed in a very recent psychic forum, you know, one of my students is out there professionally now and she's getting very exhausted. And, you know, I had to remind her, you need to really clear after each reading and then rebuild your energies. And it only takes a few seconds to do. Um, I do have my white candle for protection, purity, and cleansing. A lot of public places won't let you burn a candle, but we did cover that in the video yesterday, how to get around that. Um, and of course, again, I have my feng shui for good abundance. And last but not least, have your business cards. You know, just get used to having your business cards with you, your brochures, uh, wherever you go. You tell someone what you do. They go, oh, I would love to get a reading from you. So if you have these things with you at all times, you can just hand them your business card or go out to your car and pick up one of your brochures. That's an excellent way to start marketing yourself. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I do have some crystals on the table too we talked about yesterday and the next video that I'm going to be doing is the one on doing the three card spread with the Osha Center.